ഹാക്കും പുത്രനും പരിശുദ്ധ റോഹാക്കും സ്തുതിയായിരിക്കട്ടെ എപ്പോഴും സ്തുതിയായിരിക്കട്ടെ Now let us continue with some not so good news. 42 years after the Soviet liturgy was translated into Malayalam, we are still struggling to transfer the Adamaic way of thinking into the vernacular, to transfer ideas and concepts that originated in the cultural context of a particular people. Therefore, it is time to develop deep into the roots of the problem of transferring a way of thinking as opposed to translating words from one language to another, from one cultural setting to another. Let us examine a few words, a few words in the prayer vocabulary of the Siddhartha of our Catholics. The prayer vocabulary is the common man's encyclopedia of theology. What I am trying to do for the next few minutes is to show how we have failed to transfer the Aramaic way of thinking into the vernacular liturgy by highlighting certain Soviet words and expressions that we have disregarded during the process of translating the liturgy. I would like to argue in favor of adopting those words back and terms into the vernacular. You are completely free to disagree with me. Such disagreements can only be beneficial for the ongoing discourse on our heritage. So please bear with me. In every language, there are words that define themselves by their sounds. The sound of the word itself is its meaning. Such words emerge out of the communal wisdom of the speakers of a language. Usually, these words are understood in exactly the same way by the speakers of the same language across the board. The most familiar example from India is the Sanskrit term Shanti. <laughs> Shanti. The very utterance of the word creates the effect. And it is understood by the listener instantly. Interpretations are unnecessary. One such example from the Aramaic lexicon is the word Ruh, which literally means breath. The utterance of this word requires a special use of air and energy that explicates the meaning. Ruh is pre-language, even pre-word. It is pre-om. Ruh is the raw material with which words and meanings are constructed. In the beginning was the Ruh. The Ruh was with God and Ruh was God. Don't blame me, I just made it up. Interestingly, our Tamil speaking forefathers in Kerala adopted the word Ruha into their prayer vocabulary. Even after Sriyak literacy declined considerably, they retained this word. Our parents' generation said the minor doxology as Bhavaikim Putranam Ruha Kim Praise to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ruha. They did not try to translate Ruha into Tamil. In the 1960s, however, we translated the word Ruh into Atma, meaning soul, that which sustains life, or Arubi, that which is formless. Thus, currently, we say the minor of Saudi as Pidavanam, Putranam, Parishitha, and Sui. Both words, Atma and Arubi, are insufficient to communicate the original sense of the word Ruh. An example from the lyrics of a Malayalam movie song by a famous lyricist and poet might support the argument. Sri Vaila Ramavarma wrote a Christian prayer song for the film, Magane Nanakuvendi. The song starts with the minor doxology. Bhavaikim putrenum rupaishuddha rohaikim studiya irikete eporum studiya irikete Sri Vaila, a Hindu, was well versed in the Christian folklore of Kerala. His more famous colleague, Sri Yeshadas, the playback, the, the playback singer, is a Catholic. The film was released in 1971, nine years after the Surah Malabar Church translated the liturgy into Malayalam. The minor doxology by that time was already on the lips of every Catholic in Kerala as Pidavaran Mutraman Bhatshadak Mahanasuri. Instead of following the popular version, Sri Bailar decided to retain the Aramaic word Ruha. Both words, Parishitha Mava and Parishitha Ruby, would have been a perfect fit to the melody. Bhava Ikim Putrenum Parishitha Mava would have been fine. Parishitha Ruby would have been fine. 
while our new but both Atmav and Arubi had accumulated different connotations and might detract the listeners from the sense of the original Aramaic word Ruha. While our new, however, but both Atmav and Arubi had accumulated different connotations and might detract the listeners from the sense of the original Aramaic word Ruha. He knew that words carried not only particular meanings but also collective memories of the speakers of the language. In retrospect, one can really appreciate the wisdom of Sri Vaila Ramavarma, a Hindu.